Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I hope you're having a great start of the day. Um, I'm greatly honored to be here again at ArabNet Beirut. It's uh, probably one of my favorite events in the world. And our session today is, is going to really focus on how companies can leverage technology and advances in technology to improve their performance, deliver better experiences to their customers, and build their own future. My next guest is Jennifer Yunan, Chief Technology Officer of Malia Group. She's a fearless lady who 15 years ago decided to leave the bleeding edge of technology in the US in order to take up the challenge of transforming a 50-year-old family conglomerate. And while she's doing that today, she also has the time to be a wonderful mom for three kids, an avid biker, and a skydiver. So please join me in giving her a warm welcome. Thank you, Ziyad, for this Thank presentation and <laughs> introduction. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, Jennifer, when, when I think of a company that is almost 100 years old, uh, Innovation is not the first word that comes to mind. But uh, you know, in our discussion in preparation, uh, I actually realized that you don't get to be an 81-year-old company without actually being very innovative and very high-tech. So maybe you can talk to the people in the audience today about the history of the group with the technology angle on it before we get to the current stage. So Malia Group is celebrating this year its 81th uh, anniversary. And um, being someone who's a believer that technology is the best thing in business, I feel very blessed to be part of a group that shares the same belief. Our founders and even our management today implement this culture. And I do recall, I, I, found, I came out on a picture. In 1964 was our first investment in a system called Boros. I don't know if anyone have heard about that uh, system, but we captured in 1968 the signature of buying that system. I didn't sign and I had a big uh, event when we got our new systems or Sun Microsystems and investment, but back then we we're implementing technologies. And since then we kept doing that investment. So for us to sustain across 81 years, we definitely have to continue and transform ourselves. So we are early adopters of technology, and we are believers so that if we don't continuously transform our business, we'll be outperformed by competition. Yeah. And uh, talking about this uh, transformation, so in 2002, you were busy working on your own in the US on what is today what we call the cloud. Yes. And then suddenly you said, OK, I'm going to jump here and, and transform this group, which was already like 60-year-old company. So how, how, what, what, what took you and how did you do it? So the, f the first thing is when I came, I saw, I saw a lot of opportunities to add value. Now, it was definitely very challenging. Uh, we're a 27 companies, six industries. So it's not like one idea that's going to work across all of them. And if we look at the industries we're in, we're into pharmaceutical. We're into manufacturing and consumer goods distribution, the top three. We're in other three also hospitality, real estate. And these are the three least technology advanced industries okay. versus uh, high tech, uh, travel, telecom, banking. So the challenge is definitely harder. However, in every industry, even if it's least digitalized than others, th there are companies that outperform others by implementing technologies. Correct. And this is one of the vision initially I wanted to have within the group, although they already did an amazing start before uh, I joined uh, the group and having the, the same culture uh, across. So you can definitely do that now. But if you look at it with this diversification that we have, when you do digital transformation, it goes on three sectors, three focuses. One is customer experience transformation. The second is business model. And the third is operational processes. 
So when we're doing digital transformation on an operational process C level, it can be done across the group, regardless of the industries, you can apply them across. When it, you're talking of customer. Can you give an example about the first one? Yeah, sure. Um, so we've been doing it forever. Uh, and we, con we continue to doing it. So this is talking about your ERP implementations, your business analytics, you're talking about uh, changing your warehouse operation from uh, automated solutions from your ERP, but moving to mobile automation, to moving to voice picking. Mm -hmm. When you're going to connect your complete to your fleet to reading metrics and IoT of things and send them back to your systems, especially if you're dealing with pharmaceuticals, for example. Uh, you're talking about providing the platform of collaboration to all of your team. Today, transformation cannot happen if your members, what we call Malians, uh, can engage and are playing a big part in that transformation. So we have to give them the tools to succeed. So how many Malians roughly do we have today? 1,600 1, across different markets in Lebanon, Iraq, which are our two biggest markets, but also we're in North Africa, out of Algeria, we're in the GCC in Dubai and in uh, Kuwait. Uh, and across generations as well. Across generations. So how do you, you know, this operational process, how do you make sure that it actually scales from the youngest uh, you know, recruits that you have and the most senior or older people that you have in the company? So we mix. Uh, we're lucky also. We train a lot, our older generations, and, and we're happy to celebrate some of them. We had our celebration at the beginning of the year, and I was so proud to see people who are saying, celebrating 40 years at Malia, 30 years at Malia, 20, and so many tens, but we had 40. Uh, that's a bit almost my age there, so yeah. it's pretty impressive. And they're dealing with technology. So this goes to a lot of training. Uh, we've got salespeople who, who's been with us for 30 years, who used to you know, collaborate on paper. Now they're fully automated and they're adapting very well. But also we have to listen to the next gen yeah. that basically do not understand that coming to work is more than having your phone with you. So we had to reinvent how you access our company, uh, how you, from the, your parking up to your offices to the meeting room, everything is done through their phones today. Okay. So we're adapting to them, we're listening to them, we know they're more ambitious, they work, I think they have that look where the phone is in front of them and the PC is here and they do this all the time. Okay. While uh, if you look at the previous gen, our phone is next to us or in and, the, and in we the do drawer. that sometimes. Yeah. So uh, we're mixing. Okay, and then that leads into, uh, you said, a customer experience also yes. transformation. So when we're talking customer experience, it's definitely specific to every industry. So it can, it's rarely something we can generalize across all our companies. Uh, I'll give examples of what we do and what the customers basically, we have to engage. You know, when you talk about customer experience, first you have to understand your customers. And once you understand your customer, then you can say, I'll see what products to give them, being mobile apps or so on. And then you say, how can I customize something for them? So, what we first did is listening a lot to our customers. So social media is one way, but let's say you're in a retail store out of Malia stores. What's happening when that person enters the store is once you look at our digital signage, we're capturing information being their gender, their age. We're, uh, through our cameras and sensors that we have within the store, we know their flow of information across the store. So we know which products are more interesting. Most of our products have tags and sensors. So if they're lifting them up, we know which product has been lifted up, and this is automatically sent to our BI tools in the head office. When we've got um, people looking at their stock and it's online in the head office, and they see, for example, that this product today hasn't sold much, I'm behind in my numbers, they can automatically upload to our digital signage, maybe uh, offers, promotions, and that people passing on, then sales can pick up. Okay. So this is something we're engaging, lots of business analytics uh, with users. And then when we do, let's say, events, what people are not noticing, they might see attraction, games, uh, or people, touch a solution, but behind every touch screen, that analytics that's being recorded. So we know when we place a touch screen and an app behind it, wh where the interest okay. of the consumer, and then based on that, we go to the next level. So now we're doing personalized one-on-one -on -one events. We've launched portals where, because we're in the hair care industry, all our product goes to hairdressers. So we don't get the chance to meet our customers. Mm -hmm. So we did an online portal where you have consultant, 
and people would log in and then talk online to that consultant and get hair recommendation, product recommendation, color recommendation. So we're reaching a bit more to our customer. We're trying uh, to give them a bit also more knowledge into their product because they're pickier and the market is becoming right. harder. We also do, we work a lot with bloggers. We do smaller events uh, with customers specific on the type of product uh, they like and definitely all the standard social media. And have you seen any uh, reactions or, or, or results in the market that have led you also to maybe uh, transform your business model because of that? Definitely. Uh, the, the business model in our industry is a bit more challenging than the standards. We're not the Uber that's going to change everything overnight. But what we're doing is a mix of the old with the new. Um, I'll give an example in consumer distribution. The standard channel was make sure your product is available at the retail or point of sales and has a very nice shelving mm -hmm. and display. But I'm not sure the next gen even goes to the retail or to the supermarket. So it's not enough to have that. You have to be available online. So all our products, even if it's a shampoo or if it's a spray or if it's a cosmetic product, you can purchase it online. You're so impatient that you have to deliver it the same day yeah. back to our customers. So we're definitely mixing uh, the old with the new to adapt to that generation, even within our industry. So it feels like you're uh, running uh, a multiple startup, actually, operation for me, because you're not only fixing inside, but you're also trying to avoid being disrupted or even disrupt your own business sometimes by bypassing these Correct. traditional channels. If you look at it and if you see where we are, for us to take the proper strategy, we're not today the beginners. We're not here to look and we wait and listen and we see if a technology works, then we invest in it. Um, we're not the people who are fashionistas that basically invest in everything that moves. I leave that for the banking sector that can afford to do that. Um, but, and, and we're not the experts. We're not Google. We're not Apple. What we are are investors in technology as early adopters. And uh, when we, we do that, we're able to have the edge, but we love it so much to a point we want to share it. Yeah. And uh, we want it also to our competition and our partners to do the same. If we've invested, we want them to invest as much in it. And to a point that what we've done internally, we wanted to share it outside. And that's why one of our companies, which is Malia Tech, was built on the fact to innovate inside and then share with the outside. Okay. So it does provide today mobile automation solution, digital solution to the industries and the market. So any companies that wants to revamp and do a digital transformation, they can look at Maliatech and get the solution Use the they same want. tools that you use internally for improving Everything their own Everything is tested internally fast. So this is the luckiest thing we have. We test it internally. If it fails, we don't talk about it. We keep it in our pilot project. And if it goes well, it jumps into the market. Uh, you are across uh, a range of activities today, from distribution to manufacturing, uh, from cosmetics to pharmaceuticals, yes. and even construction and hospitality. Yes. But also, not only you know, all the fun of running such a diverse thing, you just pick you know, the most exciting places to do it as well, Lebanon, Iraq, <laughs> Algeria. So without going into that part of the risk, how can you get the the group, the, the board and the management to actually prioritize investing in technology while maybe they have other fires burning and crisis to handle cash flow, security, risk, etc. Uh, look, I think it's easier personally for me because I do believe in technology. We're noticing today that almost every investment we have done, and there's definitely hiccups in them, there's some failures, is the helping the top revenue and even better the profitability of the business. The implementation of technologies has a, such an effect of efficiency, it's quite impressive. And that's why we're able to keep on investing and investing. Now, there is a challenge where some of the previous, let's say, management or culture is that, do we deal with technology the same as we deal with a consumer distribution company? No, definitely not. But then today the talent is changing. We've got a great board of directors with lots of skills that's helping you know, manage that part. From the market perspective, we're in risky market, but this is our region. We accept it, we love it. We've been here for a very long time. We remain, hopefully, for the next 100 years. Ya Allah, inshallah. We celebrate soon the 100 and then the 200. Yes. Uh, so uh, talking about the future, let's uh, you know, fast forward. Uh, because, you know, as you said, in the 60s, you invested in one of the first computer systems. Probably it was one of the first in the region. Yes. Definitely very early in Lebanon, very maybe early. outside 
the airline or the or, the or the telecommunication space. And and we've been hearing about a lot of technology. I come from the wireless background, so I'm looking a lot at 5G and Internet of Things. Uh, we've been talking a lot about artificial intelligence and robotics, mm -hmm. and of course blockchain. So maybe you can spend a few minutes telling sure. us how already maybe you have implemented these or what do you think about what them in the future? Uh, we have to get ready for the future. If we don't, as I told you, we get outperformed. So if we talk about each one of them in general, what, what are we looking for the near future? Uh, definitely blockchain, for, for example, for the pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. There's a new law today, finally, after many years, that will allow us to know, we just want to make sure, Zia, that your prescription drug, if you're on any, will never be delayed or missed at your pharmacy, or mm -hmm. even at your house. So we'll have very soon information about who purchases which drug from which location, for us enabling us to make sure it's always available for you. So blockchain will take a big part, for example, in the pharmaceutical in the very near future. If we look a bit more on, lots of people talk about robotics mm -hmm. and uh, artificial intelligence. So robotics is something we've been doing for a very long time in our manufacturing facilities. Correct. I do recall when I was pretty young, entering these facilities, I would see a room, maybe triple this one, so many machines and maybe 300 people. And then returning from the US, I looked at the same room, I found two machines and like three people. So what happened? Are we, is our business going down? Something's not going well? Well, this is basically what being transformed. And today, we barely see any people in there. We only see lots of engineers and computer science people programming this device in the background. So it's already happening. It will keep evolving and will keep evolving within our manufacturing facilities. Artificial intelligence is something we're keeping a very big eye. I don't know if it's in the next two, three years. It's a bit more. But it's something of very big interest for us. If I look where we're investing today, we're investing more into container solutions. Mm -hmm. We want smaller solutions that are quicker, open license, open source uh, uh, application. These are easier for us at least to try because we have to innovate uh, more and more. So uh, this is a bit where we're looking at for the future. If we talk about 5G, something we're expecting in 2020, I suppose, yeah. hopefully. Definitely beside the speed, I think this will give us a lot of advantage in Internet of Things especially in our facilities and manufacturing facilities. Very good, thank you. I have a hundred more questions. I think okay. we need a whole event just for this, but I'll let the audience sure. ask a few questions and then we'll, we'll try to squeeze in more. Sure. We have five more minutes. Time, yeah, so. who, who has a question for us? You're making it very easy on me, thank you. <laughs> I, I have prepared harder ones, so <laughs> they will save you if they ask. <laughs> Who's that? All right, so I'm going to ask you something. Uh, yes. You talked about, uh, you know, doing a lot of uh, intelligence on the ground in the retail space, as well as now tracking these, uh, you know, drugs and delivery. You have a lot of data and a lot of privacy information. Uh, how do you ensure that this is private and, and you know, not available or unhackable sure. outside? What do you do there? So we're doing the ethical part from our side. Unfortunately, our laws are still not ready in our country to take all this into account. But as a company that, have, that take ethics extremely seriously, we're playing in corporate governance. We're taking this extremely seriously. We're being very careful. In fact, to a point sometimes too careful uh, and how even internally we manage it. So internally, we have lots of internal contracts employees sign, especially when we talk of confidential information. So uh, uh, we train them a lot to make sure that by mistake, sometimes people not, you know, not from any bad intention, they m might go somewhere and share a story not knowing that that has been extremely mm -hmm. confidential. So we train a lot. And not only we train once, because we know that's not enough, we oblige them to do Retraining, retraining, they have to every, for example, every nine months, they have to go, depending on the people's position and so on, they have to go through a, 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 a reconfirmation of, and watch a session that takes them through that yeah. confirmation so over that and, taken, uh, and over. Yes. Deb, uh, you're a, you know, a very uh, driven person and, uh, you know, usually, and having been in the U.S. in that environment, why didn't you continue there and take the challenge of doing your own startup? Why did you just say, okay, I'll fall back to the family business? So, look, um, I did in a way a small startup within the group. So I, I started up Malia Tech back in 2005. That was one a kind of nice accomplishment from that. But 
there's so much impact that we're doing here in the region. And there's so much we're giving back, even to the community, not only to our company, that that satisfaction, I'm not sure I would have received it back in the US. So maybe a startup in the US would have had a different rollout, different uh, turnover, but it's never too late. Which one would have been easier? I think the one in the US would have been easier. Really? Be well, maintaining something that already exists is so much harder than starting something new. When you start something new, you know, you don't have that responsibility. So continuity is far harder than a new startup. Okay, interesting. Any more questions? Help me out here. Okay. We have a winner. Hi, Ziad. Good morning, Jennifer. Nice Hello. to see you again. Same here. For uh, Malia Group, uh, since there is many success stories within the group, uh, do you foresee uh, new implementations in new industries in the area or you are just maintaining and growing the current portfolio of Malia? I wish I could tell you we don't. Uh, the blood within the group drives continuously. We've got two huge projects uh, going on right now. Uh, so definitely there is, uh, we keep on investing and growing. One is in Lebanon, um, in Enfe, Natur Development. It's a huge uh, touristic, uh, hospitality, uh, real estate, uh, pleasure, health farm, a $1 billion investment uh, in the north of Lebanon, in Enfe, that will be rolling out in the next four years. We've got one that's just launched out of Saymaniye in the Kurdish area of Iraq, which is called Magma Square. It's within the American University, also over a $50 million uh, investment. So we're not stopping. We just hope the region and the market will allow us to maintain and keep on that growth. Thank you. Very good. Um, so we're all done? I'd like to conclude you know, with a few words, because I, you can see, like, despite all the drawbacks uh, of the region, and, and this time also, and. Uh, the crisis that we have. You can see how a smart enterprise like Malia Group was able to strive, not only survive, actually, in this environment. And innovation, at its core, uh, is able to solve hard problems. And for the startups in the room, uh, I think you can also solve similar problems and learn by seeing how big companies uh, are doing it, and also by maybe partnering with them and offering your solutions to them and scaling them with them. And you will keep innovating, you will keep partnering and sharing, I hope, your innovation. Uh, all this creativity will drive the future of the region. So I truly hope you enjoyed our session and uh, Jennifer's contagious energy. Uh, for those of you who were shy, didn't get a chance to ask us questions, we will be outside for sure. a while. So there. please jump in and kindly join me in uh, a final round of applause for Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you very much.